This is Jack Rice for Air America Radio, live in Washington. I'm here with former Governor Howard Dina, of, co- of course, also former head of the DNC. Governor, thank you very much for joining me. Jack, thanks for having me on. I know right now in Washington, everybody is focusing on health care. It's a huge issue for all of us. And as of the last couple of days, we have seen now the fifth of all of the committees have now come through in terms of what it is, at least what they're recommending. And we'll see what kind of reconciliation we get. Are we really going down the right path here? Are we doing what we should be doing with health care? Generally, yes. Uh, the Baucus bill, of course, is not what we want. Um, but uh, I think we're in great shape. The, the Republicans, frankly, have chosen not to play. That means that what's going to shape the Baucus bill is the Democrats. The vast majority of Democrats are in favor of a public option, which we must have in order to have any kind of reasonable reform. So I'm glad to see the Baucus bill come out. I'm not glad about the contents. But I do think that's going to move the process along, and that's what we need more than anything right now. How did we get to this place with the the public option as it was? I, I keep thinking about the sort of strategy. I mean, you're a strategy guy. If I look back to previous races, in many ways, I think you were the precursor to the real success for the Democratic Party in terms of how money was brought in, in terms of how you were organized. And that really says a lot in terms of how President Obama won. But if I'm talking about strategy now, and I'm looking at how this was played, and maybe not be the strong enough word, but how this was played, was this played correctly? Well, I think probably there was one mistake that was made. I don't buy the the mistake that, you know, we didn't learn the right lesson from the Clinton stuff and all that. I think the one mistake that was made was, quote unquote, taking the single payer off the table. Uh, It turns out the single payer is not the bad word that the Democrats thought it was. It turns out that most people understand that Medicare is a single payer and that 50 million people already have a single payer, plus all the veterans and plus Congress itself in some ways, Um, or at least a government-run system in Congress's uh, case. So it would have been useful, and we will have a vote on single payer in the House. Uh, It won't win, but, but the public option, people have to understand, is a compromise position. It takes a single payer system and the Uh, private pay system, and it gives Americans a choice. I think that's the genius behind the Obama bill. It gives Americans the choice. It takes the choice out of the hands of politicians, bureaucrats, and insurance companies and employers and gives that choice to the American people. That's where we need to end up. That's why the public option is so essential. You can't have reform in the context of a a system that's continued to be run by private insurance companies. That's just not going to happen. Okay, so then I'm thinking about what you're saying here, and now I'm contemplating the strategy again. If I'm going to negotiate, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer by profession, so that means something to me right. in terms of how I address this. I'm sorry, I apologize. My, my, my parents wanted me to be a doctor, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, if I'm going to negotiate something, I don't come to the table and say, I'm sorry, I'll give away this, that, and the other right. before I even start. Why is it that we started right out of the chute by saying, okay, we'll give up on the, sing- the single-payer option, and then we've almost backed away without even the negotiation of, of a public option before long, uh, we're negotiating everything. We're negotiating against ourselves here. I think there was a lot of that that went on. Um, and I think, I think frankly, uh, the president, in his wish to do what the American people want him to do, which is to be bipartisan, uh, underestimated the venom in the Republican Party. There, this is a tough group of people who really, unfortunately, have put the interests of their party ahead of the interests of their country. Uh, they uh, are trying to kill this bill to make Obama look bad instead of trying to kill the bill because they somehow fundamentally believe it's not the right thing to do. If you believe it's not the right thing to do, there's plenty of room for discussion and negotiation. But to not discuss or negotiate at all, which is what they've chosen to do, essentially means it's a political decision on their part. So I think that was, that was underlying. But look, instead of looking in the rearview mirror, let's look at the, in, the, in the front mirror. Dodd has done a great job. Uh, Waxman's committee has done a great job. Miller's committee has done a great job. Rangel's committee has done a great job. Four out of the five committees have passed something that I think the American people would be very happy with. And now we've got to mold all these things. And now we're going to have the Finance Committee bill. That will move in our, our direction, which I think is the right direction, because the Republicans are going to f- refuse to pl- play. And now Democrats like John, Jay Rockefeller are standing up and saying, I'm not voting for this because I know it's not what we need in the country. Well, you've got to get some of those votes. And the Democrats are going to be in control of this bill. And that's a very good thing. Is there an expectation that when you find some middle ground here, that middle ground will include the public option? It has to include the public option. Jack, if this bill doesn't include a a public option, it's not worth voting for. It really isn't. It will not do anything for anybody uh, except the insurance companies. The the Baucus bill is designed literally by people who work for the insurance companies for the insurance companies. It serves the insurance companies better than it serves the American people. And that is not a bill that's worth voting for. 
there are parts of the bill that are insurance reform, which we did 15 years ago in my state. You can pass those, but for God's sakes, don't put $60 billion every year at taxpayers' expense into the private health insurance industry. They're the part of the, part of the big problem, not part of the solution. So we're going to get to where we need to go. I've spent time talking to Democrats. I had a great talk with Arlen Specter. He totally gets all this stuff. I think at the end of the day, we're going to be where we need to be with passing a comprehensive health care bill, which includes a public option. It's going to be very hard, but I think it's going to happen.